Hello again. Um, so somebody on YouTube remarked, well, day one to six seemed to be like messing around with the header. And day seven, it's like all done. Um, actually, you're not far wrong. I mean, there was a lot of setup for it. Um, but actually, the styles that got onto the page were done uh, pretty quickly. Uh, it was just a lot of flexbox, and I'm not actually that interesting. There's not, there wasn't actually a bunch of challenges in there, so it didn't really make much sense to kind of uh, record entries for that. But as you might recall, um, we've done all the accessibility stuff, at least for the static version. And the next step is to now go into progressive enhancement mode. And that's exactly what I've been doing. And I will show you exactly what um, what's what, really. So if you look at the screen, uh, you remember that before, when we clicked on a link, it would take us to a, a new page. Well, it still does that. But now it goes and actually hot swaps the content for us. So it's a lot, uh, a lot cleaner, if you like. Uh, it's a lot sort of up here. I, I, I don't know what the, it, it's good. I think it's nice. It's nicer than reloading the page. And that's, uh, that's working out really well for me. Uh, here's one other thing that people were saying in the comments. They were saying, why with that, the, the master, why are you so obsessed with uh, clipping it rather than just overlaying a block? And here's why. When we go to the live stream section, watch what the, the yellow strip at just below location, watch what that does. See how it slides down and reveals that content, the, the live now and the up next. And also, when I leave that section, let's say go to the code of conduct, it slides up. And so for that to actually work, the photo in the masthead has to be clipped. If I don't clip it, then it basically, it would just, that whole effect wouldn't work. So that's why I wanted it, so that it could slide out the content from underneath. So that's basically it. Now, in terms of the actual code that underpins this, let me show you around a little bit. Uh, it's all in the cds.js right now. And there are some uh, challenges, shall we put it, with the fact that I'm not supporting, say, just Chrome. Uh, so I can't use const and let and a bunch of ES2015 type stuff. Um, I didn't really want to transpile it. Um, I would rather, I think, just because there's not that that much code. I think I'd rather just write the ES5 myself and be done with that. It's not like it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit of a shame. And it does cause me a, a couple of challenges in a couple of places, but oh well. Um, so when you click on a link, I hijack all clicks with uh, document.addEventListener. I'm not a big fan of delegating all clicks to a, a, a big handler, handler like this, but it's not a big site. And it's something that we can get away with, I guess. Um, we've got, we basically call this on click. And the target, uh, we start there. And basically, I work my way back up to find the nearest anchor. There is element.closest, which you'll find if you Google for it. But it's not supported everywhere yet. Uh, I think it was Edge that didn't support it. So uh, I have to basically write a little do while. Do while, it's in there. Uh, do whiles are the funniest because I only ever use one probably every six to 12 months. But when I need it, oh, it's the best little construct ever. Find the nearest anchor and then basically decide if it's in uh, an internal link as it's got slash dev summit and it's uh, href, great. I basically go to that and, and we'll talk about that in a moment. And then if it's YouTube, I tell the video handler to begin playback. And I'll talk about the video handler probably in the next entry because I'm still working on that, still refining that a little bit. Not quite sure where that's at in my own mind. Anyway, for the anything that's not internal, we'll basically just do what it's supposed to do. It just won't prevent default. But if it's an internal link, we prevent default, and we go to that URL, which basically involves pushing state on and then calling this unchanged. And the unchanged is basically going to be fired when we go to the URL or when the pop state happens. So all it's going to do is fairly um, it puts the kind of this routing code right into the middle of it. It basically says, if you if I either uh, actively tell it to go, or if I passively find there's a pop state, as in the URL changed, tell me about it, and this unchanged will fire, and we'll decide what to do. And uh, if you've come across the supercharged router episode, uh, that's exactly what we did there. And that's why I'm applying the same concepts in production, because I know that they will work just fine. So what does the, the unchanged do? Well, it's actually all the way up here. It grabs the path, makes a new XHR and loads it. And some people sort of would say, why are you not using fetch? 
Well, fetch won't let you set a response type of document. There's a good reason for it. It's because you can fetch inside a service worker. And service worker, like every other worker, doesn't have any notion of the DOM. And therefore, uh, it, it doesn't support getting things back as documents. So I have to make a request uh, as an XHR. I don't have a problem with that, personally, because XHRs are still completely valid. They're not deprecated. Uh, OK, they don't, um, they don't return a promise, but that's OK. I can live with that. And so we, we basically load the uh, whatever it was that you were going to, whichever page you were going to. Uh, we update the nav. And then um, I'll show you the small player. Oh, there, there's a fun thing. Um, maybe I'll leave you a little hint of that at the end of this. Right, the onload, uh, what we do is we hide and swap area contents. So that's the bit where everything kind of fades out. So let's do, let's head down there. Uh, la, la, la. Yeah, I'm basically going to watch the masthead graphic transition out. So the masthead graphic uh, is the longest running of the fade out. So I basically apply this hide areas class to the body. And underneath in the styles, let me show you the masthead styles since we're here. La, la, la. Uh, masthead inline. Uh, there we are. If, if the, the page is animatable and I have a separate class for switching on and off animations, uh, and I've told you to hide areas, then the masthead graphic should turn to opacity 0, and it should take half a second to do so. At the end of that, the transition end will fire, and that's where everything everything kicks off. Because we at this point, we've got the new content. So we've, we've loaded in, hopefully, uh, all the uh, all the content for the new page. And we get the title and the new graphic and the new everything about the new page. And we swap it in for the existing one. So everything that we are going to swap out has been faded down. We all we swap everything out. And then we basically wait a couple of frames. And that's a, it's a, a slightly bizarre technique, this one. Because the event could fire somewhere in the middle of the frame, you actually want to typically wait two frames. So you wait for the start of the next frame so that anything that's pending happens. And then you wait another frame. And then you actually do your uh, your actual animation. It's I would prefer it if we had some mechanism to say, let me know when this work is done, whatever the work is, when it's been applied and rasterized and put to screen, and then do my next step. But at the moment, the double raf is what I'm having to do. And it's a bit there because I'm having to bind it because I can't use arrow functions. Yeah, I would like it if I could. Anyway, so at the end of that, so we basically fade out swap the content, fade back in. And then there's just a, a bit of tidy up about uh, toggling a couple of bits of ARIA hidden. I'm going to have to, when this is done, I'm going to have to go back and do some of that accessibility checking again, because I want to make sure that um, we don't completely lose focus on the page. So we've got a feeling that in some context, we actually will. And I probably want to take you to the header of the new page. That's uh, what I understand is normal. Talking accessibility, bit of an update for you. Uh, I show Rob Dodson the accessibility work that I did. And he was like, yeah, that's all really good. The only thing you probably wouldn't do is that that thing that you're really proud of, Paul, with the SF Jazz thing, where it said SFJAZZ. -Z. Uh, you don't really need to adjust what the screen reader is going to say. People who use screen readers are apparently are fairly uh, comfortable with the fact that uh, content won't necessarily be announced correctly in all cases, but it's good enough that, and they're used to enough that it's not really a big deal. So uh, he was sort of saying you don't really need to go out of your way to kind of correct that stuff. On the other side of it, I was like, well, I'd rather it said SF Jazz because that's what it is. Um, but I kind of understand his point that you don't need to kind of go uh, all the way to 10 out of 10 on making sure that everything sort of sounds absolutely perfect. That's not necessarily uh, the, the sort of ideal or practical approach. But there you go. I said it was a journey, uh, like all of this stuff uh, I'm going on. So that's uh, essentially what we're doing right now for uh, the hot swapping of sections. At least on desktop, it's uh, nice and fast. Let me show you uh, a timeline profile. Oh, schedule and. Uh, and so you've got this animation out here. So you basically, this is the click handler here. And then we have an animation out with admittedly one long frame in there. Then this is the swap over section here. 
And psychologically, there's a break for for people because you've faded out the content, and there's a break uh, where they're like, "There's you've act by the, doing that initial animation, you've acknowledged their action." So that's fine. So you're like, "Okay, you've you sort of you've responded instantly to my click," and then. There's this sort of the swap over moment where we buy ourselves a little bit of time. So we can afford this gap in the middle, is what I'm saying, because it's not one continuous animation. And then the secondary animation where it's coming back in, again, very similar, a couple of long frames, not disastrous, but broadly very convenient. And um, I say convenient, broadly very performant. And the reason it's performant is because I'm sticking to opacity and transform, which if you've followed, any of the supercharged videos is something that Server and I talk about very often. So there you go. That's essentially what I've got for now from going page to page to page. We've enhanced. If the JavaScript fails or isn't running, we know that we'll be falling back to link to link to link to link. So that's not a big deal. So we've kind of progressively enhanced into something that uh, hopefully should work. That's it for now. I will quickly show you the video stuff. Let me mute my, my screen there. So this is what we've got. And if we, at the moment, if we go to a different section, it goes down to a small video in the corner so you can continue watching. And um, if you go into, say, another, another thing with another video and you click on that, then it replaces it. And then blah, blah, blah. And if you go back into, let's say go back, it brings the video back up uh, to full screen if you go back to the place where the video originated. More of that in the next video about the videos. Right, check out the code. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, keep on commenting. Keep on saying hello. Keep on throwing in your ideas and suggestions. I do really appreciate them. They're, they're often very good, uh, and uh, it's lovely to read them all. So thank you for that. And I will catch you in the next entry. Toodaloo.